the topic of this video is finding the domain of a sum, difference, product, or quotient of two functions. Let's look at a problem. Given f of x equals 3x plus 8 and g of x equals 7x minus 5, find the domain of f over g of x. Okay, well, the name f over g of x means that we're taking our function f of x and our function g of x, and we're dividing them. Now, we know that f of x is equal to 3x plus 8, and we know that g of x is equal to 7x minus 5. Now, what I want you to notice is, as you're solving this problem, pay attention to when the function names first disappear. So, in the problem statement, there was an f and a g. Here we have an f, here we have a g. But at this part of the problem, this is the first moment where we no longer have our function names, f and g. So, this is the moment where we stop and we determine our domain. So, let's go through the four steps together. All right, so, stop to determine the domain. Step one, start with all real numbers. Step two, even index radicands greater than or equal to zero. There are no even index radicands in our function, so this step is not applicable. Step three, log arguments greater than zero. There are no logs in this problem, so that's not applicable. So, so far, our domain is all real numbers, because we started with all real numbers, and we didn't remove any in step two, and we didn't remove any in step three. Step four, denominator not equal to zero. Ah, here's where we're going to do something. We have a denominator, so 7x minus 5 is not allowed to be 0. Adding 5 to both sides, we get 7x is not allowed to be 5. Dividing by 7 on both sides, we get x is not allowed to be 5 sevenths. So, this is my domain as an inequality. As a set, I would write the set of all x such that x is not equal to 5 sevenths. As a number line, I would want every number in the world except for 5 sevenths, which means I would want every number that is to the left of 5 sevenths, every number that is the right of 5 sevenths, but not 5 sevenths itself. In other words, there is a whole this separates my answer into two intervals, the numbers to the left and the numbers to the right. So my first interval would go from negative infinity all the way to 5 sevenths, and then I would union that with all of the other numbers, which would be going from 5 sevenths all the way to infinity. All right, so I've given an answer in four different formats here. We've got inequality, set, number line, and interval. 